the the project that I shot uh, is uh, is from uh, Kibera, which is a slum area in Nairobi, uh, and I found the story particularly interesting because. I moved to Kenya and I tried to find a story from uh, Kibera that was um, slightly more positive than most of the stories that you can find from, from this area. Because Kibera is a very it's a cultural place, there's a lot of art going on, there's a very living place. Uh, so eventually I found this uh, ballet class which is hosted by a charity called Anos Africa and uh, I started shooting the ballet. I loved your description that came alongside the photographs because you described the classroom being cleared, how they get into colourful outfits, how they have the, the hand on the concrete walls instead of the, the ballet bar. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that actually some of these children, it is a route out of, of poverty. Yes, it is. Uh, so during the course of the two years that I've been following the class, there's uh, five of the students that has been sponsored and been able to move away from Kibera and they live in a uh, um, boarding school and they also train at the dance center in Kenya for five, six days a week. So they really managed to change their life through, uh, through dance. Fibka, let me bring in and turn to your photographs because they have, been, they have been hugely popular on social media. There they are all around me. Now you can see why absolutely obviously. But it's the obvious question. I know lots of people ask this to you. Why horses? I think I'm this typical horse girl ever um, since I start in my life I, I am surrounded by animals and horses and of course I fell in love with the horses and I think they are the most magnificent animals in the world and then I started to take photos of horses because I want to spend my life with them, working with them. They're stunning these shots on the screen. I mean, you could be forgiven to thinking that they almost had human characteristics in their faces. Was that something you were deliberately trying for when you took yes, the photographs? Yes, yes, because every horse has his own personality. And when I'm working with horses, I want to um, know the horse and to emphasize his own expression and his own personality. And they're shaking their manes now. I mean, how did you manage to get them to do that? Was just by chance? How, how did that happen? No, it's, uh, <laughs> we just tickle them in the ears. And tickle their ears? <laughs> yes, yes, and then they think it's a fly or something. Or uh, some horses are very intelligent and you can teach them to shake on hand sign. Teach them? Yes by treats and then when they recognize, okay, I get a treat, when I shake my head, they will do it for more treats. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> Edgar, let me bring you in because, uh, and you've been nominated in several categories. I, I want to talk about uh, the most unusual one because uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, that behind me, uh, uh, you, it's all to do with uh, uh, suicide, notes, objects involved. Tell me why you chose that subject matter. Um, I, I spent many years working around the theme of technology and architecture and so on and I felt as though those projects came to a natural conclusion so I wanted to challenge myself and of course what better uh, I suppose uh, uh, subject matter to deal with than death which is by nature a very difficult subject matter to work with and I've always been very interested in sort of the ethics of photography so I wanted to produce a project that thought about the sort of tensions and contradictions inherent in the depiction of death particularly violent death and it's not just suicide but also homicide uh, uh, you know and also the the important but paradoxical role that photography has played in our understanding of death I mean there are notes uh, the picture behind me uh, mm -hmm. showed you a phone with a very, very personal message yeah. a, a, a moment or two ago. What, how do you navigate the ethical, the obvious ethical dilemmas that that throws up in terms of conversations with family, in a sense, using that terrible, terrible yeah. event almost as art? Well, it's very difficult and it's actually the main drive behind the work is to think about how photography can deal with these sort of themes. Uh, and that's why the whole project was not only produced with the National Institute of Legal Medicine and Forensic Sciences in Portugal, but also with their ethical uh, departments, but also with bereavement support groups, to really to try and understand how far I can push certain types of imageries. And, and let's make no mistake, I'm very anxious around this material. What I want to communicate isn't the contents of the letters, it's really the anxiety I feel about handling this kind of material and how photography can represent it. Uh, fascinating. Frederick, let me bring you back in because uh, I, read you, uh, I read something you wrote which was interesting. You said that you like to choose in terms of what you film as challenging your own stereotypes. Yeah. So you've <coughs> filmed 
albino children, LGBT, I think in Uganda. Are you challenging yourself or, or are other people's stereotypes as well? I think it's both actually, because uh, as the, the, the ballet school and also about the, the albino children, uh, that's also a story that there's many stories from uh, albinos being uh, they take their limbs for, for traditional reasons in Tanzania, for example. But I found a story instead which focusing on a, a family of seven children with five are born with albinism and the family actually stays together and they manage to to live their life and there, there's no harm to them. Edgar, as well as uh, the category we talked about, uh, yeah. there's also everything around technology because you, you're also obsessed with, with technology. Now I never thought you could turn that into art but I was surprised right. looking at some of your pictures. What were you trying to imagine and trying to produce? Uh, a lot of those, uh, those works uh, stemmed from long-term collaborations with uh, organizations, what I called hard-to-access organizations, like the European Space Agency. I was the first artist whom they gave un unrestricted access uh, to their facilities. I later went on to do a project with BMW and a variety of other power stations and so on. I was really just trying to think about our relationship with technology and also, crucially, photography's ability to represent uh, a reality shaped by technology. I think a final word because I know you're bringing out a book uh, shortly on horse photographs, more of those, but also you've you filmed do dogs as well. I mean, uh, so much in photography that's about composition, getting it all set up. How much is chance though and fluke? Um, you, you mean how? In terms of actually getting that photograph? Yeah, it, it really de depends on the animal because, for example, a dog is, you can just say to him, sit and stay there, and then you can take the image, but a horse is not like a dog, so it could take more than an hour to take a shot.